Coming up tonight, rapid intensification. Hurricane Beryl continues to strengthen as it moves across the Caribbean. Meteorologist Ian McKenzie has the latest details. Plus, doubling down, the area MP for Central and South B. Luther says water woes will be addressed. And later, we wrap up our month-long series highlighting amazing Bahamian fathers for the love of dad. Tonight's special dad and so much more straight ahead as our news weekend starts now. This is our news weekend. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Megan Shepard. Police alerting media of a double shooting over in Eleuthera this morning, shortly after 11 a.m. According to reports, two men were shot in Greencastle near a bar and are currently listed as stable. Police are actively looking for two men believed to be involved in this latest incident. Police also issuing a tragic update this morning as the 36-year-old woman that was shot in Yellow Elder Gardens on June 23rd has died. Initial reports indicated the victim was involved in a verbal altercation with her 37-year-old boyfriend outside their residence on Malvern Road when the shooting occurred. She died shortly after 6 p.m. yesterday. This latest turn of events pushes the country's murder count to 61. The ongoing water crisis in central and south Eleuthera leaving many residents unable to perform normal tasks such as bathing or flushing toilets. While this pushing government to send a forceful warning to Aqua Design Bahamas, the company tasks with providing the essential service. Minister of State in the office of the Prime Minister Leon Lundy says the level of service provided by the company is unacceptable and does not meet the standard in the country. Doubling down this week just before entering the House of Assembly, Area Representative Clay Sweeting. Look, the people in Central and South deserve proper water. It isn't, it isn't a treat, it's a necessity, um, it's a basic human right, it's a need. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll do what we have to do to ensure um, that the people have water, you know, and if that's one of the options that we have to look at. Um, then, then that'll be. But at the same token, uh, we got to look at immediate results uh, for them so that they can have proper water and we'll continue to, to make that happen. Also addressing the matter, Free National Movement leader Michael Pintard, who visited the island earlier this week. It's affecting the reputation of, of the country because there are many tourists that are on island at the moment and those tourists are suffering tremendous inconvenience, but even more importantly, the residents themselves. Some employers said their workers themselves are unable to come to work because they can't iron, unable to take a bath, unable to flush their toilet, uh, et cetera. And so we, we are deeply concerned. Meantime, Prison Commissioner Don Clare stressing the need for a new prison facility. This as he renewed the call for better working conditions for correctional officers. Clare made a similar call back in November when he said improved salaries could make the job more attractive to quality officers. Despite little upgrades, Clare suggests there's a lot more needed to improve conditions. You be, you be, be looking at, a, at, a, at an age-old facility, right? Despite putting in some air conditions and fans and, and, and um, uh, 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 despite putting in a new water system and new generator generation plant, uh, despite doing numerous things, the facility is aged. You know, there's, there's nothing we can do with this facility. You know, the only thing we can do with it is, is use it as, as, as a training ground for future correctional officers. You know, we need a new facility. He reasons a new facility is the only way, expressing confidence that a new facility is the only way to fix legacy issues. As it stands now, the facility does not live up to international standards. We still have slopping in maximum security prison. Until we can end that, until we can end four to five man in one cell. You know, there would be no improvement in conditions. We are, we are trying to be certified as a correctional facility. And certification will only come when you meet certain international standards. As it is now, we don't meet international standards. 
Caribbean community leaders have postponed the 47th regular meeting of CARICOM heads of government set for July 3rd through the 5th in Grenada. This as the region braces for Hurricane Barrel. The community's primary focus is now on citizen safety and security as some, several member states, including this year's host nation, Grenada, are in the hurricane's path. CARICOM heads say they stand ready to support member states affected by this hurricane and urge residents to take all necessary protective measures. Well, as all eyes are on the tropics now, as the Caribbean braces for Hurricane Barrel, the powerful storm rapidly intensifying overnight and throughout the day. Meteorologist Ian McKinsey has the latest. Ian. Thanks, Megan, and good evening, Bahamas. Welcome to your Sunday evening forecast. We're currently outside our studios. We have some showers with a temperature of 84. Winds are from the east-northeast at 10 miles per hour. Comfortable feels like temperature of 76. Current temperatures across the country at this time in our nation's second city, Freeport, we have 82. Also in Alice Town, Bimini, 84 in Nicholstown, Great Harbor Key, the capital, and in Governor's Harbor, as well as Marsh Harbor, Abaco. The Central Bahamas continue those 84s in Camps Bay, Georgetown, Arthur's Town, 85 in Deadman's Key, and 86 in Coburn Towns in Salvador. For the Southeast Bahamas again with those 84s in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, 84 in Abraham's Bay, set of 85s in Colonel Hill and Delectable Bay, Acklands, 86 in Matthew Town, 87 in Providencialis, Turks and Caicos. First look now at our satellite imagery where the focus remains in the tropics where we want to look at barrel. Barrel is bearing down and should just move south of Barbados late tonight, early tomorrow. We expect a lot of torrential rainfall, some storm surge six to nine feet above sea level, and that should pose a great risk to those windward islands. Barrel is expected to move into the Caribbean, what they call the graveyard, and that is mainly because of the strong easterly trade winds that affect storms around this area creating shear. but however barrel is expected to remain a dangerous category three storm or major hurricane as it makes its way in treks according to the latest nhc forecast towards jamaica and is expected to possibly impact jamaica by about midweek taking a closer look to home we have a mid to upper level trough across the northern Bahamas, this should continue to trigger rather pockets of unsettled weather across the area too about midweek. Elsewhere, high pressure remains a dominant weather feature across the lower portion of our islands. The National Hurricane Center is also looking at this area of low pressure approaching the Mexican eastern coast as well as Invest 96 out there which is expected to possibly become hurricane or tropical storm Chris by about midweek busy 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 season and it's only the last day of june here is the track of barrel as expected to move through the windward islands into the open caribbean sea and then eventually makes its way towards the yucatan peninsula peninsula which has been extremely busy this season boating forecasts across the country at this time in the northwest and central bahamas winds east to south easterly at 10 to 15 seas two to four feet low tide at 10 26 High tide at 4.13 a.m. tomorrow. In the southeast Bahamas, we have a caution in place for you boaters. Winds east to southeast 15 to 20 seas, 4 to 6 feet. In your extended forecast, we can expect showers to persist to about midweek. Have some clearing as barrel is expected to pass south of us, pulling all the available moisture in the area. So that should spell some sunny conditions by mid to end week. Highs getting up into the upper 80s, low 90s. The lows hovering in the low 80s. That's a wrap in the evening forecast. Make it a great, safe, fun night, everyone. Thanks so much for that update, Ian. When our news weekend comes back from the break, the Ministry of National Security finding new ways to tackle crime. The latest campaign calling for more community involvement. Plus, the Our News team helping a local organization with a timely donation. We'll tell you all about our recent community initiative when our news weekend returns. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 
the Ministry of National Security finding new ways to tackle crime using a combination of technology and community involvement tactics. The announcement came just hours before the country recorded its 59th homicide for the year. Since then, the murder count has climbed to 61. National Security Minister Wayne Monroe is encouraging everyone to get involved. He says it's better to be a changer than commentator. A crime-free looks like me campaign. And this campaign identifies some of the positive programs that align with Vision 2040 action plan for our young people. These will be but a few of the programs that are available to our young people. And we're encouraging more individual and organizations not only to do their part, um, but to notify us of the part that they are doing. This summer, the ministry also has something to offer children interested in artistic programs. Dance classes and arts classes daily, commencing July 22nd to the 23rd of August 2024. These programs will allow our children to express themselves while learning about their heritage and culture. We believe that this program will identify children who have hidden talents in these disciplines and possibly provide an exploratory path to higher education in voc vocational or tertiary education. Our news starting the summer off by making a generous donation to the All Saints Camp. The All Saints Camp serves as a refuge for men, women and children diagnosed with HIV AIDS here in the Bahamas. Included in the give back were non-perishable food items that administrators say couldn't come at a better time. The act of kindness is not a first for the team, as we have maintained a long-standing relationship with the camp, reflecting an ongoing partnership. Our news anchor reporter Berthony McDermott says this donation showcases the company's dedication to community involvement. Being a part of the Kill Hamas group of companies, it is our mandate to give back to different organizations, different nonprofits in the community. So what better way to do that than to give groceries to the All Saints camp? She already said that it will go a long, long way, and we're happy that we were able to assist in this way. Assistant Administrator of the All Saints camp, Keishla Forbes, says the camp currently has 70 patients. Forbes adds donations are constantly needed and the camp welcomes them. It is definitely needed. Grocery is something that we always need here at the All Things Camp, where we try to provide at least three meals a day for the patients. We have approximately 40 adults and 30 kids here. So this grocery will go a long way to assist with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, donations is something that we always need. So if anybody else wants to come and donate, that would be awesome for us. Um, we don't turn nobody down. We accept grocery light use clothing if it's if it's good um anything that you feel as if can help us out we do accept still to come on our news weekend he is a man of many talents and now a recent speech delivered at ub has gone viral we hear from the man of the moment but first i got to speak to a swimmer battling a rare form of cancer and more on lamar taylor's decision to transfer from one university to the next. All that's coming up on our Sports Weekend. No travel, no problem. Summer is here. Whether you're fighting to stay cool or heating up the fun, our News Weekend is your guide to the ultimate staycation. We're talking all of the hidden gems right in our backyard, from the hottest bars and lounges to the coolest excursions and events in town. So stay cool, stay local, and stay tuned. Tune in every Saturday to make sure your summer staycation is an unforgettable sensation. Only on Our News Weekend. Welcome back. Sasha Lightborn is here now for our Sports Weekend. Good evening. Welcome to our sports. I'm Sasha Lightborn in for Tage Adderley. A Bahamian swimmer needs your help as he battles a rare form of cancer. I got to speak with him last week at the Swimming Nationals. Let's take a look. Meet Sean Neely Jr. 
a Bahamian swimmer facing a rare form of cancer, metastatic paratesticular embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma. His journey began in July 2022, and still today, he fights. I did nine rounds of chemo, um, you know, and then I decided it was time to do my surgery, and then that's when the financial problems came up again, you know, after doing extensive treatment and stuff with chemo and stuff like that after a whole year i decided to start raising funds again you know um, my family is looking to do other stuff besides go fund me like cookouts and other stuff so uh yeah everybody's supporting me um from you know my jungle group roots the um you know bahamas aquatics my swim club you know everybody's supporting me even people i don't know and i appreciate it so much the cancer affects Sean's right kidney, but the ultimate goal for him... I'm hoping to finish this bottle soon, you know, continue on with life, you know, get back into swimming. Sean attended last weekend's nationals in support of his team, Lightning Aquatics. I haven't I haven't seen this pool in two years. I haven't really been around the pool in a, almost over a year, so it's hard, you know. I still use, every time I come out here, I'm still used to jumping in the pool, you know, and competing, you know, I'm very competitive, you know, but it's just good to be here with my teammates, you know, and be in the atmosphere. You know, after a long, hard year. You know. Now, if you wish to help Sean, he still has an active GoFundMe page. You can also visit his Facebook page at Sean W. Neely. Staying in the pool, by now you should know that Lamar Taylor is one of two Bahamians that will represent the Bahamas at the Paris Olympics in swimming. Lamar also announced last weekend that he is transferring from Henderson State University to the University of Tennessee. The main thing that attracted me to Tennessee was that it had a lot of Caribbean swimmers and international swimmers, so it wasn't just all American swimmers. Um, there's a lot of big names like Dale, Jordan Kurgsky, uh Nikolai Blackman. This is a, just to name a few. That's Lamar Taylor telling me why he decided to transfer from Henderson State University to the University of Tennessee. Lamar was home last weekend competing at the 52nd Bahamas Swimming National Championships where he made the cut for the Olympic team. And he says moving from Henderson State to Tennessee was not a decision he made alone. Now we wish Lamar all the best at his new school as well as the Paris Olympics. That's a wrap for sports on this Sunday evening for our sports weekend. I'm Sasha Lightborn in for Tage Adderley. Have an amazing week. Thanks so much, Sasha. Kentario McKenzie is a videographer, filmmaker, actor, performer, and spoken word artist. But you may know him best from his viral student reflection at the University of the Bahamas' baccalaureate service last month. As he geared up to receive his Bachelor of Arts degree in English, he spoke about being an A student. I was an A student, but not a great student. Okay, I'll do it, but this grade won't seal my fate, student. I was a fake student. I was a late student. I had the concept for my start UB, because UB is a school that takes a lot out of you. And then because of the plight, I think, of just being a bohemian student who also have to deal with whatever else going on in your life, home, family life. You know, we, we, have, a fa we have a very tight family unit over here that sort of relies on everybody within the family structure and that doesn't that doesn't allow a lot of room for just being a student so what's next for Kentario? well he is the lead actor in the tv show struggles and dreams that airs on fridays right here on our tv all summer i have my own um individual projects that i'm working on just as my brand as an artist as a spoken word um poet as a as an actor, you know, I do Junk in Paradise over Atlantis, which, you know, that's been a blessing. And I feel like we, we, need, we need to get more behemoth eyes on that. Well, on the other side of this break, our Marlena Leonard talks one-on-one -on -one with a well-known Grand Bahama businessman. But this time, the topic of conversation focuses on fatherhood. Stick with us. No travel, no problem. Summer is here. Whether you're fighting to stay cool or heating up the fun, Our News Weekend is your guide to the ultimate staycation. We're talking all of the hidden gems right in our backyard, from the hottest bars and lounges to the coolest excursions and events in town. So stay cool, stay local, and stay tuned. Tune in every Saturday to make sure your summer staycation is an unforgettable sensation. Only on Our News Weekend.
thanks for sticking with us. If you've spent any time in Grand Bahama, you've probably seen some of the H Forbes Charter Service fleet at some point in your travels. Tonight, we wrap up for the love of dad as we look at the founder's story from another angle, not as a businessman, but his role as a father. Our Marlena Leonard reports. Hadley Forbes is the owner and operator of H Forbes Charter Services, an almost 60-year-old business. But he's more than a businessman. He's also a father. When asked if he ever struggled to find the work-life balance in fatherhood. It's very easy, very easy to balance both. Um, I have 21 children and they're all adults. The last one is just 22 years old and he is at Dalhousie University in um, Nova Scotia, Canada. And um, it's just me and my wife and my mother-in-law in our home. And um, I speak to him and most of them every other day. He says the importance of one's role as a father should not be underestimated. Being a father is a very important role one have to play in one's, in one's life. And a child who do not have their father and mother living together at home, to give them the kind of, of direction that they need so that they can mold and shape their future um, is missing out on a lot. And we as fathers who are supposed to guide them and direct them and live the kind of life that they would emulate for their future. Forbes tells us there have been a few major lessons he's worked to instill in his children, mainly centering around love and respect for family and a strong Christian faith. They all want to be like daddy. I tell them, no, be like Jesus. That's the perfect example. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thanks so much for that story, Marlene, and thank you for joining us for our news weekend. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. Have a safe and wonderful evening.